Good evening and happy Halloween from the unofficial Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights Wrestling Show. I am your host and solo commentator, Dante Vesalius, and we are here in WWE 2K23 in the fog of virtual Orlando, Florida, competing for this, the Halloween Horror Nights Icon Championship. Our bracket three rounds of one-on-one -on -one matches leading to a triple threat elimination to face off against Fear, the current belt holder and master of the lantern. Up first, the Schmidt brothers collide. Halloween Horror Nights 10, 11, 2007, 25, 2015. Kind of 30. As he likes to say himself, he is Halloween Horror Nights. So we must presume he's a favourite to win this whole thing. Carnival of Carnage roll in tonight because he faces a tall order in his first round. His own brother. From parts unknown, weighing in at 296 pounds, Eddie Meant to be the icon of Halloween Horror Nights 11. Scraps due to unfortunate world events. Jack's younger but much, much larger brother, the Chainsaw Psycho, Eddie Schmidt. Has made appearances in the run houses, most of them. His debut icon house. Also likes camera hackathon. Will his bitterness for being looked over lead to a victory tonight against his brother. Round one, Jack the Clown, Eddie Schmidt, ring the bell. Eddie instantly using his power advantage, but his brother counters with a DDT. Jack immediately going for a rolling on Prettier, one of his finishers, slamming the mask down on his brother's face. Jack working on the thighs. And the lungs, the two things needed to run away from the serial psycho killer in his chainsaw. Tossing his brother's leg, hoping to tear a ligament and using his superior size and strength to lift up Jack the Clown. And again, more damage. More damage on the lungs. Standing elbow drop. Punches and bunches. The 1031 choke bomb. 
going in for a pin. Will this be a new Legacy Inc. finish? No. Jack kicking up, showing you can't keep a good clown down. Countering out of his brother's back of the head neck lock. You must excuse me, I do have a cold. <laughs> clown destroyer. Going for a pin. Very close to the ropes. Eddie kicks out of one. Stifling his brother. And a sunset flip power bomb off the apron onto the unforgiving Orlando floor. The foot DDT. The worst move in all of pro wrestling, maybe? Either that or the overdrive. Rotating brain buster. Yeah, ground and pounding too. You see the unconventional form of Jack the Clown. Kicks in the chest. Running, but his brother stifles him. Another clown destroyer. Eddie, for his size and strength, not getting up much offense. Oh, lured his brother in. Triangle forearm counts into a punch in the gut. Knee to the big clown nose. Yeah, we should really give Eddie a year. Give Eddie his own year. Imagine the merch with the chainsaws and psycho mask. A proper, a new run house. Really, Eddie thing? Up. Picks the clown off his feet. Eddie, of course, is very bitter. Oh, headbutt. The back does not seem to stop him. Somersault, I'm prettier. Will this be it? One, two. No, Eddie kicks out. But his brother counters again with a kick to the gut. Another rolling, twisting brain brustler. Eddie counters again, ground pound. This must have been what childhood was like in the Shady Brook Sanitarium. Throwing his brother to the corner, lifting him up for the Lance Archer style blackout. No one will survive. Wait, no, that's Tommaso Champion. Everybody dies. You can see why I got those confused. <laughs> that's Lance Archer. Oh, victory roll using the ankles. Eddie tries to reach for his brother, who's doing a dance, I guess. Another clown destroyer. This seems to be his go-to move. Little hit lead him through the whole contest. In the corner, just stomping a mud hole and running footwash. Going up to the top rope, pulling his brother up. The Brutus Ball, aka the Clown Ball. And a pin. WWE 2K23 really prioritizes top rope moves, so I am surprised that wasn't it. Calling his brother up for the rolling on pretty and once again, will this put him away? Will the clown advance? Will we bring the carnival of calming? Will we get all jacked up? And we will second round. Jack the clown. Eddie once again left behind, left embittered. Clown Destroyer. Somersault on prettier. Eddie's blackout, his biggest chance of offense, because we can't let him use a chainsaw. Rolling on prettier. And again, 
showing Jack the Clown securing the pin. Here the original icon of Vantage. Eddie's bitterness will only grow. And eventually they'll give him a year. But there he is. The eyes of malice. So, advancing to the second round, Jack the Clown, but who will he face between the caretaker and the director? Yes, the caretaker doesn't receive any re-announcement, but here he is, Albert Kane, father to another scrap icon, Cindy Kane, icon of Halloween Horror Nights 12 in Islands of Adventure, the mortician, the undertaker, one could say, the master of the screen house. Very fond of removing hearts, chanting spooky nursery rhymes. Will he advance to gain control of the lantern and make everything the shady rest funeral? Home? This eerie music takes its effect on you, actually, <laughs> listening to it intently. Will Daddy buy you a mockingbird tonight? Director, Halloween Horror Nights 13. Other than Jack McLeod, the most represented Halloween Horror Nights icon, having done a stint in Singapore. He loves to make his horrible impact on the world of film, but can he do the same in the wrestling ring? Albert Kane, Paolo Rominski. Ring the bell. Director goes in quick. Completely staunched by an early pinfall attempt on the Northern Light suplex by the caretaker. Who chokes immediately going for the illegal choke. Forster. I think the director is the shortest and lightest of our combatants, but he has an explosive moveset, reminiscent of one of the snuff films. Final cut, Big Show style. Dragon suplex, Kenny a major star. Wrist lock, bent over. See, this is what Albert does so well. Isolating parts of the anatomy. 
again, ripping the ligament. He's so interested in the human body, and more importantly, finding out what makes a soul work. The director is only interested in one thing, fear, pain, and legendary moments. Perfect for a wrestling actor. Oh, stifled with a kick to the knee to the face. Knife edge chops, followed by forearm. The pinfall, I very much doubt that's going to put him away. Barely a one count. A rope break by the cerebral assassin, the director. Fear is a weapon. Caretaker thrown to the barricade. Standing elbow drop. Setting him up for something, but he can't secure a pinfall on the outside. This just shows how sadistic these men are. Countered. Flatliner by the caretaker. If that's not proof that I gave all these dudes custom movesets, then what is? Standing poison runner? Or just a regular hurricane runner, because he's open front. Lift and carry his larger opponent. But both quite thin. This is very much the cruiserweight division. Caretaker sits up like a dead man. Pavel goes. Wheelbarrow. Bulldog. Doing a little bit of limb manipulation himself, but pulling him up. Short arm. Close line. Triple. Into a standing drop kick. He calls that the Palm Dior. Gut punches. Smash mouth punch, punch to the mouth. And now, final cut. Not going for a pinfall over these big moves. Chasing his opponent to the outside. The sadism on display. And an eye rake gouging the eyes. This has been all director. Really looking to make a splash on his next feature film. There he is. Rolling the camera. Film is a weapon. Pain is temporary. The film is forever. He hits another final cut now. The Undertaker rouses. Not the Caretaker. The Undertaker's a different race. I love that. I mean, he is a funerary mortician. Both back in the ring. Zigzag. Going up to the top rope. Swanton bomb. That should be it. No! I'm as shocked as the director is. Life in the old caretaker yet. Presumably. George Act. Belly to belly. Again, that anatomical study. Irish whipped into the corner. Man, these two are... Oh! Dancing like the corpses in a funeral home. Before Sister Abigail's kiss. Should I say daughter Cindy's kiss. Two. And that's it! Wow. Caretaker appears to be the Mick Foley of this contest. Taking in... Min maximum amounts of damage doing minimal offense but securing the pin our fight your winner the undead the undead caretaker moves to the next round showing his opponents how he can spring back to hideous unlife in a second and secure the victory these two really didn't give me any time for trivia. And so, two advanced to the triple threat. But up next, the Usher versus Dr. Oddfellow. the 
Kuno, USA, weighing in at 160 pounds, the unrelenting. Our next contest, two of the most recent male icons. Unfortunately, the Pumpkin Lord couldn't be here because he doesn't have legs. But here's the usher of the Universal Palace Theatre. A grand old institution that deserves respect. And you see on his Titantron, shush. Icon of Halloween Horror Nights 19, ripped from the silver screen. Julian Browning. He's not from here. Dr. Oddfellow of Halloween Horror Nights 32, currently happening in the year 2023, which is when this video was made. That whistling can only mean one thing. He's back. Jack the Clown's former boss, one of the oldest characters in lore, but we finally got a look at him, and personally, he did not disappoint the master of the dark zodiac. This is one of those lose lose for me because I could happily see both of these two advance to. Well, I say that, I'd happily see everyone advance to the second round. But the master of the dark zodiac, Julian Browning the Usher, Dr. Oddfellow. Ring the bell. Oddfellow immediately using some of his chaos magic to glitch 10 feet in the air. But the usher, who spent a lot of time dangling 10 feet in the air, is not perturbed. Saito suplex from a wrist lock. Jaw jacking overhead vertical suplex. Kick to the back. Another kick to the back, seemingly working the, the back. Presumably, Julian's best place to work would be the neck, as he counters up. Now, is it just me? Beautiful half and half suplex. Or is Julian like an actual hero? Like, I get that he murders people, but he murders crap people. <laughs> and he loves his theatre. I mean, your host tonight is a museum worker, so perhaps I just relate. Do not touch the museum objects the same way you don't... Oh! Same move as Jack the Clown! Interesting. Spinning big boot. Will we see similar movesets between the ringmaster of the circus and his star clown? Jumping in and out, proving his authority. Diving crossbody springboard. Julian really needs to get some things going here. Shout out to uh, the Ghostly Swoosh podcast's deep dive on her love for the Usher. Because that video rules so good. If I remember, I'll put a link in the description. But I love Dr. Oddfellow as well. I've loved the stories. I love the scare actors. Um, me and one of my closest friends at work cannot stop saying... Well, that sounded dismissive. Me and one of my closest friends cannot stop saying, Oh, you sensitive Pisces, at each other. Now this is... Oh, German suplex with the bridge to the prawn hold. Let's go, Julian. Unsurprisingly, a technician dropping the elbow. Will we see a tongue removal? Oh, I think that was a counter of a Torpedo Moscow. Torpedo Carry Ohio. Oh, roaring air elbow neck breaker fake out. Stomping the back. 
diving. Oh, on the point at the back of the head. Tossed back into the ring. Like a bucket of empty popcorn. Jumps back into the ring. Avoids another Torpedo Moscow. Torpedo Carry Ohio. Octopus Stretch. Will we see an early tap out? Oh, it's in. It's in a long time. No. The Usher fights out with the drop toe hold. His, uh... Oh, Tongan death grip. Silence in the movie theatre, please. Trading submissions, but these two fight out. Goes to escape his undead assailant. Does so with a shin kick. Oh, back into the octopus stretch. Unrelenting. Drop toe hold again. Knows the counter for it. Hits with the Torpedo Carry Ohio. One. Two. No. Odd fellow just kicks out. 2.5. Wrist lock. Wearing him down. Stomping the back of the arm. The arms that leave gum under the seats of cinemas. Discus clothesline. Oddfellow's got some colour. Unsurprising. Running Hurricane Runner, as it is his blood that means that Jack the Clown has become immortal. Usher, refusing to be stunned. Standing. Standing flatliner to choke? That'd be a flatliner. Counters out of it. Another discus big boot. Drop kick to a down opponent. Up to the top rope, the circus big top. Diving splash and a pinfall. And that's He's it. Not from here. Tongan choke. Silence in the movie theatre. The running hurricane runner. Don't know why that got a highlight. The diving splash. The big top splash. We did not see the dark zodiac. His finishing move entered the dark zodiac. Ever mysterious. Dr. Oddfellow advances to the triple threat before we advance to that triple threat though sorry to AEW you but yes I have stuck all the women in one match the storyteller Bloody Mary Lady Luck and Chance straight women's eliminate a four way to gain the female icons belt because they don't do mixed gender in WWE games Strict, Elizabeth Strict. All we know is that when she was a young girl, this old woman ate a demon, and that gave her the ability to turn her dark and twisted stories into reality. 
don't let the appearance deceive you. This is not a kindly old woman. This is the icon of Halloween Horror Nights 15. The portal to Terra Curantis. The land that feeds on blood. The first female icon. And also due for a return, in my opinion. I know we got a little bit of Terra Curantis at 30, but Terra Curantis rules. So the forgotten icon, Halloween Horror Nights 19, uh, 18, pardon me, Reflections of Fear, Bloody Mary, Dr. Mary Agana, Grand, great granddaughter of Mary Worthington. Probably the best entrance for the, one of the worst gimmicks know who this actually is. <laughs> the rest was great, the gimmick was terrible. <laughs> In her hands, Fortuna, the mistress of all, luck, fate, combined, kind of led to the discovery of America, led to the works of Edgar Allan Poe, a recruiter, and a monster beneath those enchanting green eyes. Halloween Horror Nights 26, you won't stand a chance. Jack's assistant, cohort, mistress of the Carnival of Carnage, featured amazingly in the Carnage Returns, which is where this costume comes from. think of what to say but basically I just I love Chance. <laughs> Chance is extremely derivative and it's even worse when she's standing next to Lady Luck uh, for reasons but I love Chance. I love I, she's great. I'd say don't let her playful demeanour see you, but I don't think you would. Look at those eyes. What's funny about a knife? Well, let's see if we can get her championship belt. Will her other opponents have no chance in hell? There it is, the Women's Icons Championship, the Golden Lil Boo. Storyteller, Bloody Mary, Lady Luck, and Chauncey. Now this should be chaotic. Broken up into partners. To Mary going off the chance. <laughs> Has seen enough of uh, therapists in her time. Storyteller going for an incredibly early pin. Deadly Nightshade by Chancey. And Storyteller locked on a heel hole. 
Much like Jack and Dr. Oddfellow, Chansey will have very showy, spinny, strange moves. Uh, Lady Luck befitting her immortal, unknowable nature. It's more of a powerhouse, as indicated there. Dr. Mary Aguilar willing to go hardcore and inflict a lot of pain as she throws herself in the mirror every every time you call on her to attack you. And as indicated there, the storyteller, the wild card. Chance keeping back up, just like Jack. When Jack's away, Chance will dance. Seems like Perhaps my commentary got to the ring because they seem to be kind of picking on chance. Ah, there we go. The dance partners have changed. Dr. Mary going after the storyteller. Lady Luck now. Focusing on her dice rolling hand. Lady Luck is cool, but like... was never a person. Everyone else was a person, right? But she's the Roman god Fortuna. Like, we have evidence of her existing in World War I, uh, 1492. Like, in their cafe, why did Lady Luck post Halloween Horror Nights 21? Like, I know she could inflict a lot of misery with her giant roulette wheel and stuff, but... I mean, I guess uh, they say that she uh, possessed Lazy Lady Isabella of Spain. Queen Isabella of Spain, sorry. Lady Luck possessed Queen Isabella of Spain. And so it could just be someone possessed who has the opportunity to run Halloween Horror Night. Ooh! Standing... Uh, snap power slam. Sadistic Dr. Mary. Pinfall. No, still too early. Perhaps in the future Elsa Strict will get the Terror Queen herself to assist her in tag team matches. If the other icons can get on board enough to make a tag team division. Joint manipulation. Oh, straight jacket. Followed by the stomps. Dr. Mary takes chance to the ropes. What does she have in mind? Oh, the mirror stomps. Seven years bad luck. Maybe luck taken down. They're not going to break up the pins because they all understand it's an elimination, elimination match. Mounted thrashing on the storyteller. Dr. Mary is really going after everyone with wild abandon. The years in the mirror have driven her truly insane. Not that she wasn't before with her aver aversion therapy, her immersive therapy. Multiple patients die. Yes, go Chansey! Back fists, taking everyone out. Cannot secure a pin though. Amanda, why are you ignoring me? Oh, she's dead. Sorry, I've been pretty good with no impressions, and that wasn't a full chance impression, but I do have one, and I do do it to myself, to amuse myself. Man, really, the, the forgotten icon of Halloween Horror Nights 18, Bloody Mary, is really just on everyone like a wild beast. I kind of appreciate it. Oh, roll up pin. Only one count. Chance resistant to damage by the sense of it. Probably, presumably, kinda happy that Jack got through the first round. But she's she does have a nicer relationship with Eddie as well, so. Snapdragon. Coming on Mega Style again. Going into the court. Ah! Chance is about to hit one of her big moves, but chop blocked by the storyteller. Working as the, uh, the spoiler.
Double underhook. Suplex. Rope assisted Alabama slam. Pinfall. No. You can't keep a good Chauncey down. True psychosis coming out. What's that psychosis? She's not a real like. I know she hit, she's 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 murder clan. Presumably a mortal too. Will she hit her big move this time? No, <laughs> no. Lady Luck takes her. Reverse European uppercut and a kick down. Everyone's down. Chance stands tall. Flying nothing to no one. <laughs> Mary seems shocked. Lady Luck counters out of it. Tree of tree of woe. Electric chair drop. Reversed to a poison runner. Second rope springboard thrust kick cannot put the storyteller away. Chauncey gets the storyteller out. Whips into the corner. Will she hit this corner move? That she keeps going? Yes! She will! No! <laughs> no, she won't. Lady Luck once again. No one wants to see. Chances butt based corner move. <laughs> to be fair, Lady Luck like, also has a butt based corner move, but Chances is more ridiculous. Tossed up Irish Whip, misses with the strike. Lady Luck, like, Irish Whip of her own. Tilt a whirl, the roulette wheel. Dr. Mary watching the elimination. No! Everyone's still in it. No eliminations in this elimination match, which means when they come, they'll come thick and fast. Double underhook. Double underhook power bomb. Choke drop. The storyteller will be looking for the uh, fairy tale ending. Lady Luck has a tilt well, she calls the roulette wheel. Chancey will never, ever get off her corner move. Package pile driver. Climbing to the rope, stuck to the line. Got lost again. Corner moves countered. And the ropes double under hook. Fairy tale ending. And luck has run out for Lady Luck. Hence to the back. Now. Double underhook again. Double underhook face buster. Or gold buster, I guess. At that angle. Double under one handed. One handed choke bomb. Seems like Storyteller's running away with this earliest icon here. And in the first two rounds, the earliest icon won out. Mounted Luthez press. Mounted thrashing. By the truly undead ghost Bloody Mary. John's watching seemingly in awe for a second there. Throws Dr. Mary Agana into the corner. Kick to the chest. <gasps> no! <laughs> she was going to do her corner move. But then she saw a pinfall and did not secure the pinfall. Of course, Chance has a comedy spot going through this match. Elbows to the chest. She's here to hurt everyone. Out. 
Kick to the gut. Kick to the gut. Oh. I'm not entirely sure what happened there, but... Okay. More swift kicks from Bloody Mary. Working on the back of the thigh. No comment. Uh, okay. One. Two. Chance. He's just fully taken too much damage. So it comes down to this. The two earliest female icons. Halloween Horror Nights 15 and Halloween Horror Nights 18. Pounce through the mirror. Really feeling herself. Everyone's taking a lot of damage. This could be it. One, two. And we have our new champion. Sheer chaos of this match. Lady Luck didn't. Lady Luck ever got a roulette wheel. Here is your winner and new Universal Champion, Mary. From Forgotten Icon, one with the least amount of involvement in Icons Captured, to now the first female Icons Champion, Dr. Mary Agana. Bloody. Mary. Say her name. Witness her reflections of fear. But now, the triple threat to decide who goes one on one against Adaru, fear, and may gain the male version of the belt. Truncated intros for our competitors for the rest of the night who you've already seen. business and his business is funny business defeating his brother in the first round as we saw but now the icon of 10 and 11 faces up against the icon of 12 the caretaker and his meandering walk once again cut down don't skip ahead is what I'm saying <laughs> this little piggy went to market This little piggy had roast beef. And this little piggy fought for the Halloween Horror Nights Icon Championship. From 10, 11, and 12, all the way to 32. And representing the Doom Brigade from the edge of reality. Dr. Oddfellow, will we see the end of the Dark Zodiac move that he's hidden from us in the first match? In the other matches, it seemed like the earlier icon was the winner. 32 beat out 19 quite handily, I must say. And goes Jack the Clown, the Caretaker, and Dr. Oddfellow. Surely Jack and Oddfellow have got a score to settle. Flatliner. This could be it. <laughs> Immediate pinfall. The caretaker's confident. No, barely a one count. Dr. Oddfellow once again teleporting to the dark dimension. Go home driver? Emerald Flosion? 
Jack the Clown attempting a lie detector, but barely hitting the profile over counters with a knee DDT. Overhand chop, flatliner. Would he go for another pin? No. Caught by Jack the Clown. Gut kick. No equipped into the corner. Discus the big boot. Back of the head. I'm, sh I, I'm shocked. Both men seem to be decimating the caretaker and letting their ancient feud. Well, I say that, and then he goes for a complete miss. Superman punch. Throw to the corner. Kick to the gut, but the caretaker comes in to spoil. Irish whip to the ropes. Forgets that he just threw a clown at himself. The clown responds by mounted thrashing and tearing at the face and eyes of the, of the caretaker. Everyone stands in the wow, everyone stands in the corner. Jack the clown managed to get off a Oh, one prettier of his own. Perhaps that's the original one prettier. And Dr. Oddfellow's circus is where Jack learnt it. Taking out his move. Taking a high knee from the caretaker. These three love this corner in particular. Rotating. Is this a cycle driver? Or maybe that's the punchline. Uh, <laughs> wow, Jack's ancient nemesis, Dr. Oddfellow, has got him all seeing sorts. They can't connect with an attack. Fireman's carry. Taking all the way to the other corner. Snake eyes into the top turn buckle. Caretaker, foot washing, Dr. Oddfellow. No one can hit anyone. All out of sorts. Flatliner. Seemingly the caretaker's got to go to a move. He's already hit much more offense than he did against the director. Northern light suplex. No. Kicked out. No one's taken enough damage yet. <gasps> They're teaming up. They're working together. Could this be a mended group? No, it's a um, move. I thought perhaps Dr. Oddfellow's circus would and collection of horror was coming back together, but no, they still hate each other. Despite the fact they're costumed. Dr. Ruffalo taking a breather, focusing his attention on his arch nemesis. Now back to the caretaker. Miscommunication, butting heads. The caretaker regains control with a drop toe hold into a heel lock. Jack the clown. Does a dance with his ass in the face of the ref, and he finds it amusing. Up and off, on trap suplex. Death of the really fighting back at both the circus people. Get a real job, says the caretaker, like funerary technician that leads to insane body collection. Good move setting up. The Enter! The Dark Zodiac! That twisting brain buster that we have seen Jack employ. More connections between the two of them, but Dr. Oddfellow does it much better. Crouching punch. Kick to the gut. Kick to the gut. Elbows. Fireman's carry. Standing Michinoku driver. I think Jack saw that Dr. Oddfellow might win at the end of the Dark Zodiac. He could not allow that to happen. Even if it is an animation. Rolling unprettier to the caretaker. Will this secure the pin as Dr. Oddfellow kicks up? No. All three men are still in it. Lie detector dodged again. These two just know each other too well. As I alluded to earlier, it was Dr. Oddfellow's blood that made Jack the Clown immortal to begin with. Diving drop kick. And Dr. Oddfellow, of course, gained the cane of souls from the deep in the jungle. Pull back, psycho suplex, onto the caretaker. Oh, Dr. Oddfellow goes running for something for Dr. Albert Kane. Launches him, Irish whip. Reverse. Matt Return? I guess. Hello, Slay. Oh, kick to the head. Dr. Albert Kane picks up Dr. Rich Old Fellow. And a tombstone pile driver. The caretaker is here. 
Nope, kick out. <laughs> wow, I really set him up big for that. Sorry, Albert. Standing close line. Jack the Clown. Wrist locked. The joint manipulation we've seen from Albert over the course of this evening. Dissecting the bodies as he did in life. He now does in undeath. Our fellow stifling the mortician. Get him up. I don't even know what to call that. It's like a jaw jack stunner. <gasps> Somersault. I'm prettier. I jack the clown. One. Two. No. The carnival of carnage is still open and Dr. Oddfellow's traveling oddities continues. Caretaker thrown into the corner. Kick misses, runs around him, bounces off the ropes. Come, this is true clownish behaviour. High knee from Dr. Oddfellow, who's had enough of this foolishness. Second high knee from Dr. Oddfellow. The two doctors, one real, one circus performer, go against each other. Again, now they, the gentlemen are in love with this corner, but no time for that. It's time for a staunch power bomb as Dr. Albert Kane fights out. And hits the heart punch. The heart punch. This man has no heart. But Dr. Kane has no him. Get for a fellow. Kick to the back. It's calling for it. Will we see the end of the Dark Zodiac again? No, the octopus stretch. And Dr. Albert Kane is out. It is now the two arch nemeses once again against, against each other. Halloween Horror Nights 10 and Halloween Horror Nights 32. The proprietor of Dr. Oddfellow's circus and the most infamous attraction. It was always meant to be this way. The first icon, the first original icon and the most recent original icon. Can Dr. Oddfellow put him away with a rolling cane clothesline? No, not going for the pin. His punishment must be more severe. Roaring elbow to the back of the head. Neck breaker fake out. Second rope again. Calling up his former employee, the man that he murdered, who murdered him. According to his scare actor, has murdered him again. The octopus stretch! The octopus stretch! The the end of the Dark Zodiac won't put him away. But neither with the Octopus Stretch. As Jack fights out with a side slam. Whoever wins this between these two men will go on to face the Master of the Lantern. Running Hurricane Rana. Goes for the pin. This could be it. They've both taken so much damage. And it is Dr. Oddfellow. The most recent icon goes on to face fear inside the lantern for the Universal Studio Halloween Horror Night Icon Championship. The heart punch again. 32 versus 20. The most recent, recent icon of all goes forward and advances to our final match of the evening. The hotly contended championship match. Dr. Oddfellow versus Fear. down to this Dr. Oddfellow representing the future of Halloween Horror Nights one of the oldest characters in lore with 
which stands in front of him. Look at that. Yes. There is nothing left to fear but fear itself. And at Halloween Horror Nights 20, the year 2010, fear emerged from his lantern. And since then, as the lantern bearer, he has gained the Icons Championship. Can Dr. Othello take it from him tonight? By far the two tallest competitor. Most monstrous, arguably. One arm made of wood. And an evil roots have taken the lantern dimension where he captures the icons. Claimed to be the overall mastermind of Halloween Horror Nights. But is he more likely just a caretaker of this dark demi-plane dimension? What he is, however, is the champion. That cannot be refuted. Gaze into the face. Yeah. Will the fear itself retain the bell, or will Doctor Oddfellow? Carry Halloween Horror Nights into the future. Introducing the challenger from the edge of reality, weighing in at 219 pounds, Doctor. And his opponent from your darkest fears, weighing in at 100 pounds, he is the Universal Champion, the final. Ring the bell. Immediately returning to the dark dimension. But his teleportation that he's done every match for reasons I do not understand refuses to work. The first real move of the match. Apron back suplex. Now if that doesn't tell you that Fia is something to be reckoned with, I don't know what does. Maybe his impressive seven foot height. Maybe the fact he apparently weighs a hundred pounds. This enormous, monstrous, apparently quite light. Wow, straight to the outside, even quicker than the caretaker directed match. Fear just aggressively rolling punch, aggressively defending what he considers his. The Lantern, the Championship. Halloween Horror Nights may be Jack the Clown, but fear is its true master. 
Othello getting some offense up for the first time in the match. Tosses Fear back into the ring. Would Fear take a count out victory? Probably would, actually, thinking about it. But Dr. Othello realizes the match can only end. What? Well, wow. The match can only end in the ring. I can't believe it. He also does the terrible foot DDT. Him and Jack really have more in common than they would like to think, I imagine. Leg snap. Really chopping down the vertical base of the big man, as JR would say. <laughs> Leg DDT again. Oddfellow has uh, located that the height disparity is probably where he struggled the most. So attempting to chop the big man down, the big redwood, or indeed freebie haunted gallows tree. Big splash! Although he may be light, he's very angular, and parts of him seem to be a tree. Another year that Cindy was predicted for, Dr. Albert Kane's daughter, replaced by Finn. Diving to the outside, but countered with a Randy Orton style SEO power slam. Thrown back into the ring. Oddfellow is convinced that this match must end in the ring for him to gain his championship. Roaring elbow again. Kick to the back of the spine. This creature even has the spine. Dissecting the bicep. The jaw jacking vertical suplex thing. I do not know what it's actually called. Is this it? No, it's a jaw jacking vertical suplex thing. Five count now. Dr. Adafar is going to try and get back in the ring, I imagine. Or break the count himself. Beer taking that moment. Tom luring Dr. Oddfellow in. But. Snap suplex on the outside. The unforgiving Orlando tiles. Saito suplex after a short arm. We've seen this in previous matches. Dr. Oddfellow really going for what brought him to the dance. Once again, <laughs> JR would say. Tossed into the five count again, despite having broken the count. And he goes to break the count once more. Breaks the count back outside. Fear. Delayed vertical suplex. Fear is seven feet tall. The blood rushing to Oddfellow's head and slammed down on the floor. Unforgiving tiled floor. Othello realises he's taking as much damage on the outside as Fear is. Decides to continue the match in the ring. Again. The end of the Dark Dimension! Could this be it? No. Fear. Fear using all of his tricks. Backbreaker. Military press slam. A move we saw Eddie use earlier in the night. Fear. Let Dr. Oddfellow know that he is all of the icons. Heel hook. Just like Albert Kane. He's doing him in order. 11, 12. No! Before the director could be invoked by Fear, he takes a discus clothesline. But fights back up out of it. Running neck breaker. Going for the cover. Looking to put Dr. Oddfellow away, but barely a one count. Even burn after all this damage they've taken on the outside. Fear, Irish whip. Another SEO power plan. Shouldn't manipulation. Calling for something. 10.31 choke bomb. The boogie bomb. No! Close. 
fear is wearing down Dr. Oddfellow. Fight forever. The child, the crowd chant. And unfortunately, he's trapped in the lantern. Oddfellow may indeed fight forever. He'll hook on the outside. But he can't submit out there, Oddfellow. Oddfellow's lost the idea of the match. He's just simply fighting for his unlife, for his immortal existence in the face of the true scion of fear itself. This time fear breaks the count. Confident. The count out. He does retain the belt. But would he be happy with that? Is that what the true master of the lantern would do? <laughs> Perhaps, as the Irish whips him back to the outside, but Oddfellow's not staying down. It's that circus spirit making sure that his opponent doesn't stifle his way back into the ring, but then he did it anyway. That reverse power slam. Randy Orton style. Up to the second rope. Misses with the splash. Oddfellow just having enough energy to roll himself out of the way. Kick to the gut. Is this... Enter the Dark Zodiac. Will this put him away? No. The power of the lantern even stronger than the Dark Zodiac. The twisting brain buster. Fear. Struggling to his height. Odd fellow, unrelenting. Hangman choke. Heading to the outside. And once more, the majority of this match has been on the outside. Dangerous for both competitors. Although Fear would retain on a count count. I very much doubt either of these monstrosities wants to see it end that way. Talk to Odd fellow. Going up to the top rope. Swanton splash. Diving elbow drop completely misses. Last ride power bomb by Fear. Confident against the compound damage that he's inflicted. Tries to drag off fellow back to the ring. Waist lock German suplex, followed by a clothesline. This could be it. Oddfellow has taken enough damage. No! No! One big move is either of these men need, I think. Fear of doing slightly better than Oddfellow, but presumably not thinking he can be tested as much as this. Another big military press slam, falling from 10 feet, perhaps. Elbow drop. Directly to the heart. Military press line again. Oddfellow is really frightened fear, I think. Fear needs to put him away with these big moves, one after another. Not going for a pinfall, though. Climbing the top rope. Fear with an elbow drop to the heart. And a pin. One, two, three. Fear retains the bell, retains the lantern. Oddfellow struggling through the tournament, beating the Usher in the first round, beating his arch nemesis Jack McClown and the Albert Kane, the caretaker, in the second round. Here is your winner. But he will stand still, against fear. Final. Fear choking Dr. Oddfellow. placated by his belt. This will be returning to him and to the lantern, the icons. Revealed. Stroking Dr. Oddfellow, telling him that he too will enter the lantern. No one will escape from it. Unfortunately, that's the end of our programming for tonight. Tonight? What was that?
Here. He's grown legs and fear isn't backing down from the challenge. Well, we know our next competitor for this belt from us on this Halloween special. Happy Halloween. 